is here. Yes. Hallelujah. And his name is John C. Whoa. Super cool. Oh, thank you. They gave me two gaskets. These are awesome looking. They've got like a carbon fiber piece on the outside, a little embellishment for aero. I do feel, yeah, they do. They have those little DB killers, but those will be coming out relatively quick. Okay, this is the stock exhaust. So now that you heard it, they sound pretty awesome. Let me talk to you a little bit about my other thoughts on these pipes. First off, they're pretty expensive. In the United States, they're selling for $1,100. That's $1,100. So you would think if an actual set of cans cost that much, that they would be top quality, right? Well, again, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not sure if Arrow is trying you know they're rushing to hit the market or what the deal is but uh the fit and finish on them is nice except for a problem i ran into during installation when you get a triumph part in the mail uh, or at the dealer there's a part number on the box the part number on the box corresponds to installation instructions do you really need installation instructions for a set of pipes no not really but if it's the first time you ever install a set of pipes or there's anything special you need to know like how to take off the heat shield. In case you're wondering, you take this one off first and there is a hidden bolt right there. Then this one, then this slides off, then this thing slides back. And there's little teeny rubber grommet deals that hold them in, super pain in the butt. Once you get the aftermarket pipes on, and again, the installation instructions would be nice, you're gonna deal with the, the DB killers or the decibel killers. These are the things that quiet down the bike so that they can legally sell them for on-road use. Here's where I get a little bit upset. Right now, I'm dealing with Triumph of Seattle, uh, and I'm not having the greatest success resolving the problem. I'm really hoping before I post this video that they came up with a solution, but it's been like two weeks now and I haven't heard anything back. So here's where things get a little dicey. So typically with DB killers, they are hard to remove because they fit into this outer sleeve, the actual can itself, pretty tightly. Holding them in is a screw and the screw goes in and it bolts into this outer flange of metal. You can see the hole right there because this one's not pushed all the way in. <laughs> a trick that I learned uh, back in the day on removing these is to actually take a broomstick and stick it in the hole, move it around until the thing comes loose and then pull it out. Here's where things went south for me. As soon as I started working on this, uh, the first one I did, I attempted was the bottom. And you can see it's a little oblonged right now because let's just say it did not come peacefully. So there's a little little piece right here. You end up uh, actually taking your die grinder because they spot welded on. Just slice that off. You're supposed to be able to unscrew these. Well, as you can see, this is pretty short. What ended up happening when I was working on this, and I'll try to zoom in and see if you can literally see this, is the stud on both the top and the bottom snapped off after like two turns. That's super annoying because again, these pipes at this premium uh, should not break like that. So having that snapped off on the first one that I attempted on the bottom, I fought with it for literally a good two hours before I was even able to get the piece to move. How did I end up finally getting it off? 
Uh, I ended up having to take the die grinder, and this is stainless steel, so I destroyed a $50 carbide bit, and literally channeling it out so that the broken piece of stud that was left in there, I could get out. Then I had to take pliers and reef this thing open. An absolute nightmare. To make matters worse, if you ever go to get an inspection sticker and the guy doesn't really dig loud noise, uh, I'm never gonna be able to install the DB killer again because the stud is still broken off inside of this pipe. The top one came a little bit more peacefully, but I still ended up having to drill out the hole to like a 9 16 just to get the screw out. I don't wanna be a wet blanket on arrow. They're the only people that have pipes available for this yet. I'm sure in a little bit more pipes are gonna come out. And Arrow traditionally has been top-notch aftermarket, but that really annoys me. The reason why, again, like I said in the onset was these are 1100 bucks, it's a lot of money. Now, I did receive communication back from the dealership and what they did tell me was that they have had similar issues as well, meaning the material that they're making the hardware out of is crapnium alloy. I'd just like to send these back and get my money back and then wait for maybe Zard or somebody else to come out with something. Maybe British Customs will come out with something, I don't know. They do look a little cooler. They sound a lot better. So if you're into the super loud decibel makers, then buy them. If this, if this is not a problem for you, then buy them because they look cool, they fit perfect, and they sound awesome. At about 2000 RPMs, they do get a little droney and it is kind of loud on the highway. Also, as far as the heat output goes, these pipes definitely get a little warm, but I wouldn't say they're any warmer than the factory ones. So let me give you a few more sound clips of how they sound. Uh, we'll do a ride by and let me know what you think. As always, like, comment, and subscribe.